Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi. A little while back on SR Lounge, we did a tutorial, a written tutorial on how to text your images. Uh, that tutorial became very popular, and I thought it was about time to kind of take that tutorial, turn it into a video, and kind of add some steps from you know beginning to end to kind of turn it into the ultimate texturing tutorial. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to start with this image right here, and we're going to take it and turn it into this image right here. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is load up my base image. So I'm going to close out this file right here. I'm just going to hit no to not save it. And uh, I basically have downloaded the exercise files and put it in a folder on my desktop. Here is the image that we're going to be working on, and here are the two textures that you guys can download. I believe these are just open source textures that I found online at some point in time. So you guys can find textures pretty much anywhere. You guys can go out and shoot textures, uh, which is great, kind of build up your own little portfolio of textures. You guys can go and download them as well. And the great thing about texturing is that with you kind of never really know what you're going to get until you try it out. You know, it's that little box of chocolates thing. Um, so depending on what textures you use are going to completely vary the results and uh, you can get some really cool effects. So we're just going to teach you guys the technique. You guys can take that technique and uh, do whatever you will with it and show us some of your amazing results. So what we're going to do is load up our base image. All right, and now we're going to start by placing first our paper texture. And so I can do that by either going to the file command place or I can just pull up my window again. I'm just going to click and drag into it and then I'm going to hit enter to place it and what I'm going to do is adjust the blend mode from here just so that I can see my image again and uh, typically the blend modes that I'm using most often for texturing is the basically contrast blend modes these the, from overlay to hard mix and more often than not I'm using the top three overlay soft light and hard light these are all uh, blend modes that are basically going to enhance and increase the contrast in your image by darkening in the dark areas brightening in the bright areas of the texture and and or whatever blend layer that you're doing so we can start with overlay and then hit down to kind of flip and uh, hard light is kind of where I want to be on this image because I want to be able to really see that texture and I'm gonna work on we'll adjust the opacity and everything later on for now I just want to add my my different textures to the image so the next texture I'm gonna add is the scratch layer and typically this is how um, our texturing works uh, how I like to texture my images depending on what I'm going for if I'm going for a vintage look which that's kind of what I'm doing in this image I'll usually add like a paper layer that kind of gives me that paper uh, texture and then I'll add a scratch layer which kind of gives me those scratches over the image so this is gonna be my scratch layer I'm gonna go to overlay again I'm gonna click through my first few and again I kinda land on hard light I like the look of this and uh, don't be worried right now about the fact that oh we have tons of scratches over our actual subjects and we have tons of kind of texture over them we're gonna fix all that in this tutorial and we're gonna do it the proper way now what most tutorials would tell you at this point is if you want to remove areas of the texture from say the skin or just the entire subjects themselves they would tell you to create a layer mask over each layer of the texture and so we'll do that right now I'm going to show you guys the problem with this technique so we're going to click on the top layer just to make sure it's not visible so we can kind of just see one of our texturing layers at a time and keep it simple so if I click on add a layer mask on this and I switch to my brush and shrink it down a little bit and I start painting to reveal the layer below and remove the texture well what we're seeing happen basically is because this texture is blending with the layer below we're getting a really nice uh, and unique basically color gradation where the texture appears versus over the original image which is this so what you're gonna see if you try and mask out the texture is that you're revealing the layer underneath and you're gonna see that stark ca uh, contrast between where the texture is affecting the colors of the image and where you're seeing just the base image itself so we don't want to use this technique to be able to re uh, remove the texture over our subjects now I'm gonna remove this layer mask right here and then we're gonna click visible on our top layer again and I'm gonna show you guys the proper technique alright so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna select the actual image layer and make sure you do so otherwise the quick selection tool isn't gonna work correctly select the quick selection tool by hitting W uh, you'll notice that the hotkey for quick selection and the magic wand are the same so if you if you hit W and it defaults to magic wand then just go up to the menu and hit quick selection now we're gonna make uh, exactly what it sounds like a quick selection of their persons so where we don't want the image to where we don't want the texture to appear basically so for you this might be the skin area this might be uh, you know just part of the faces whatever it is that's fine I'm gonna select it because I don't want the texture to appear over their entire bodies so I'm gonna make that selection and it's good right there and then with that selection we're gonna soften it up just a little bit because I don't want the selection to be have hard edges so I'm just gonna go up to my select menu I'm gonna hit modify and we're gonna do a light feathering um, 50 pixels should be enough between 50 and 75 you don't want it too much or too little because it won't be noticeable or if you do too much it might bleed into their their bodies a little bit too much so I'm gonna hit OK right there 
and this is what we're going to do. We're going to average out the texture layers, uh, and, and this is what averaging does. I'm going to click on the first texture layer, the paper texture layer, and notice that the paper texture right now, both the textures are still smart objects. I actually want to keep them as smart objects. You can you can rasterize them and do the same process, but it'll have a slightly different look because basically as a smart object it's going to do a form of averaging that uses masking. When you do it over a rasterized image it's just going to basically average the uh, image itself. So it kind of has a slightly different look to it. So I got my texture selected. I'm going to go to my filter menu. I'm going to go to blur and I'm going to hit average. And now I'm going to click this top layer so we can see a little better. Now what averaging did basically was it took this entire layer and it averaged out the color in our selected area. So it removed all the detail there, but it kept the actual color tone from the texture. So we get that, that same color tone over our entire image, but no texture over the faces or over whatever area we select. Now I'm going to click uh, to reveal that top layer again. I'm going to switch my layer to the top. Oh, and our selection right now was uh, removed. So if your selection gets removed, if you're doing it this technique, just hit Control and click on that smart, fil smart filter layer mask right there. And then, uh, and then it automatically reloads your selection. So I'm going to do the same thing. I can do that by hitting Control F, um, which is just that shortcut for whatever last filter you used. Or I can just go back to the menu and select it again. I'm just going to hit Control F to do the exact same thing with that top layer. All right, now we have all the texture removed from our subjects. Now what I want to do is actually go through and adjust the opacity of the layer so I get kind of the correct blend. I think it's a little bit too harsh right now, a little bit too much uh, texturing. So I'm going to go and adjust the opacity of this top layer, the scratch layer, and get it to kind of a point that I, I can see the scratches but it's not too heavy handed. And then I'm going to go down to the paper layer, I'm going to do the same thing and just kind of reduce the opacity a bit. Perfect, that's just where I want it. All right, now what we're going to do is actually rasterize these texture layers because we want to make small adjustments to the textures themselves. So I'm going to cl right click on each texture layer and hit rasterize layer. Right click on each and hit rasterize layer. And in case you want to see in detail what it did when we uh, when we basically averaged out those uh, textures, is check this out. If I click Alt and hit uh, this little eye right here, it's going to show me just that layer. And I'm going to move my opacity to 100% so we can see the entire thing. Check out what it did. Over that area, basically, it averaged out the entire color tone over the image, but then, uh, so we have the color tone, but then it, we don't have any of the detail in that area that we averaged out. And same thing with uh, this one. It did the same exact thing. So I'm going to reduce my opacity. I think it was at 66% or something like that. All right, so now let's clean up our textures just a little bit. So basically what I want to do is these little specks that are right here by his head, I feel like are really, really distracting, and I want to remove some of these specks just so they're not so noticeable. Um, and I, I just need to target which layer those are on. So I'm just going to click the top layer. I notice that the specks disappear, so that's the layer that they're on. I'm going to select the top layer. We're going to use our healing brush tool right here, and then I'm just going to shrink it down to about the size of those points, and I'm just going to Alt-click on a different area and just kind of move it over and and remove some of these dots out of here. Um, it's a very quick and easy process just to kind of, because it doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to not be so many dots and little details there. Um, so basically what I'm doing here is if you guys have a texture that you kind of need to fine tune now to fit the image, that's what you're going to use this process for. Just kind of fine tuning the texture so it looks right. I'm going to remove this last speck right there. So this is great. I've got my textures applied. I've removed uh, all the texture over the skin, over the areas that I don't want it, um, as well as kind of played with the opacity. Now what I'm going to do is add several adjustment layers to kind of finish up this image. So we're going to start with a curves layer. and I'm going to use this layer to add some overall warmth to the image. I want this image to appear here just kind of very nice and warm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the red color channel and then I'm going to boost the reds in the midtone so it kind of gives me that little bit extra warmth and I'm going to drop the blues in the midtones and then I'm going to just slightly slightly increase the greens in the midtones. And now uh, we don't have to worry if this is too strong because what I'm going to do is right after I do this I'm going to adjust the opacity down a little bit so basically the overall effect isn't going to be that powerful and I think I got a little too much green in there. There we go. Alright, so that's good right about there. Alright, so now I want to add a brightness and contrast layer just to reduce uh, some of the contrast in the image. I don't want it to be so poppy right now. I want to basically flatten out these colors and then later on we're going to uh, add some more blacks to it, but for now I want it to be a little less contrasty. Okay, the next adjustment layer we're going to add is a hue saturation layer. And with this layer, I'm going to add it and I'm going to pull down the saturation so basically it kind of mutes the image. And I'd say about negative 25 is about right for me. 
From here, I'm going to add another curves layer, and this curves layer is going to be my. I'm going to do a little cross processing on this because I, I kind of want it to be a little have a little vintage feel to it. So I want the colors to be a little bit uh, kind of twisted a little bit. So I'm going to go to my reds. I'm going to boost my reds up in my highlights, and I'm going to drop my reds down in my shadows. I'm going to do the same thing with the greens. I'm going to boost it in the highlights and drop it in the shadows. I'm going to do the opposite with my blues. I'm going to drop it in the highlights, and then we're going to boost it in the shadows. Okay. And again, this is a very powerful effect now. I'm going to adjust the opacity down to kind of bring that, uh, kind of make it just more subtle. And get it to about, I think about 50% is kind of where I want it. Perfect. And now from here, I'm going to add one final uh, adjustment layer, which is going to be levels. And we're just going to kind of balance out the blacks in the image and the highlights. So I'm going to add some more blacks just to kind of pull it up a little bit. I'm going to pull the, uh, down the highlights from the top just to add some more highlights to it. And then uh, mid-tones, I want to kind of pull it up just a tiny bit just to give it a little bit more mid-tone contrast. If I go to the right, it's going to give it more mid-tone contrast. If I'm going to the left, it's going to give it less and kind of just you know fade the image a little bit. So I want to give it just a little bit of a mid-tone contrast boost. And that's great. The last thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to select my background layer, and I'm going to do one quick little sharpening layer on my original image just to make sure it's sharp enough. I'm going to go to Sharpen. I'm going to click on his eyes and then just kind of tweak it. I think the radius might be a little bit too high. Let's see. Uh, looks like 4 is about right, and then I'm just going to go up a little bit on the amount. And that's great. I'm going to hit OK, and here we are. We are to our final image. It's been textured. We've done every step from A to Z. So have fun with this technique, guys, and be sure to post in the comments uh, with links to the images that you do of your own so we can see your cool artistic works using this texturing technique. All right, guys, see ya.